So tonight we're going to talk about some definite integrals. Now we've used the word indefinite before, and I just want to really highlight the, you know, the main difference between the two. Our indefinite integral, so in our notebook, would look like the integral, let's just say, of f of x dx. Okay, where again, f of x is our integrand, and dx is the variable we're integrating with respect to. Now a definite integral is going to have what we call bounds. So a definite integral is going to look something like the integral, let's say from a to b, of f of x dx. All right, so again, this integral has what we call bounds on them. Now let's be smart. We want to talk like we, um, you know, we can speak mathematical language correctly. This is read the integral from a to b. Okay, you always start with your lower bound to your upper bound of f of x dx. Okay. Um, again, this is called my upper bound and this is called my lower bound. All right, but we do want to make sure we can speak it as well as perform it correctly. So this is the integral from a to b, lower bound, then upper bound. Make sure you say them in that order. Otherwise, you're explaining a totally different function. So one of our main goals with definite integrals today is to, um, to find the area of an integral. Now, start this in your notebook, please. We are strictly finding the area between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, between the curve and the x-axis. And that's our goal, is to estimate or to you know, find the exact value of the area in that section. So, let's look at a few examples. Uh, let's say example A. If I said the integral from 1 to 3, notice how I say it and write it, the integral from 1 to 3 of 4 dx. All right, we're going to solve everything with a sketch today. So here's what we would do. We would go ahead and sketch that function. So let's make nice, neat sketches. We're basically sketching the equation as y equals 4, which is just a nice horizontal line. Okay, so y equals 4. But now we're zooming in on a section. We only want the area from 1 to 3. So I'm going to put out some nice tick marks, 1, 2, 3, and let's highlight that section. This is what the question is asking for. What is the area from 1 to 3? Well now, this happens to be very nice and simple. We can figure this out. All I see is a rectangle, so in my head I'm saying that's just area equals base times height. See, my base goes from 1 to 3, which is a base of 2, and I know my height has a height of 4. So I would say the integral from 1 to 3 of 4 equals 8. All right, and I'm solving all of these with just geometric shapes today. That's my goal. Let's try another example. Um, let's say the integral from 0 to 3 of the quantity x plus 2 dx. Okay, and like I said, everything we do today is going to be geometric with a sketch. So let's get a nice, neat sketch drawn. Um, x plus 2, so I'm really just graphing y equals x plus 2 is my function, which is just a nice line, vertical shift of 2, y-intercept is 2. Has a nice slope, rise 1, run 1. Okay. Now again, they're saying strictly zoom in on the area from 0 to 3. So I'll put out some tick marks, 1, 2, 3, we should have nice neat sketches. I'm going from 0 to 3, and I need the area from the curve to the x-axis. Okay, so notice curve to the x-axis this is a section. Now i got to slow down and say, okay, hold up, wait a minute. What am I staring at? What is that shape? Hopefully you recognize that shape from your good old geometry days. We're going to use quite a bit of geometry coming up. It is a trapezoid. All right, and we're going to deal with that trapezoid a lot this year. So if you don't have it memorized, today's the day to get it down. I would say it's just one half. Um... I believe you probably learned height times base 1 plus base 2. Now, what they probably didn't tell you in geometry is that you can easily interchange your heights and your bases. So, for example, what I mean by that is I don't have two bases. My base would be my bottom. I don't have two flat lines on, you know, my, as bases. My two heights are flat. So what I'm going to say, and probably for most of this course, is one half base height 1 plus height 2. Okay, and I just want to be very clear, I'm, I'm sure they taught this in geometry here, um, that the, whatever you're adding there, that is the two pieces that are parallel. All right, so just keep that in mind. Those are my two parallel pieces. So as I go to attack this problem, my area is one half. 
Okay, my base here from zero to three it has a base of three. And now these are my two heights. My height at zero is two plus my height at three. Well, if your picture's not super accurate and you can't tell, all you need to do is evaluate f of three. What is f of three? Well, three plus two is five. So I would say that has a height of five. So I have one half times three plus seven. I get a nice 21 halves for my area. Now notice, I don't have any units on there. I'm not saying it's feet squared, etc. We're just saying this is our area, 21 over two. All right, let's squeeze one more in there. Um, let's say our function is, say the integral from negative two to two, notice lower bound, upper bound, of the square root of four minus x squared dx. Okay, now I would say the other two should have been fairly common for you to say, okay, I know exactly what that is. This one might require some work. So off to the side again, I'm just gonna say y equals the square root of four minus x squared. And I'm gonna say, okay, what the heck is that shape? Well, I start thinking about what, what kind of shapes have x squared in them? So well, a parabola has it in there, and I don't know, a circle has it in there. And then I say, okay, what happens if I were to, I don't like radicals, what if I square both sides? I would get y squared equals four minus x squared. And oh my, if I add that x squared over, I would get x squared plus y squared equals four. And oh my goodness, can you believe it? We are actually staring at the equation of a circle. All right, so it's in disguise. It's gonna be in disguise every time you go to do it. So don't get caught in that bear trap. You know, talk yourself through it, square both sides. I basically have a circle centered at the origin with a radius of two. And that's what I need to sketch to myself. We are sketching all of these. Uh, so my radius at the origin, uh, I'm sorry, center at the origin, radius of two. Okay, now, look back here. It was a positive square root. That means it only wants the upper half of the circle. You're not actually going to draw the whole circle. If it was y equals negative radical 4 minus x squared, then I would just draw the lower half of the circle. All right, so I just want the upper half of the circle, and I literally want the area from negative to positive 2. So I'm saying, okay, area of a circle, we've done that with related rates, uh, pi r squared, but I only have half of it, 1 half pi r squared. So I've got one half pi, my radius is two, squared is four, so I get a nice area of two pi. And again, no units to worry about for the time being. All right, so this integral, this, with these definite integrals, these bounds, are getting the area under the curve. All right, let's keep chugging with a few more examples. Number four, I believe we're on. Uh, if I said the integral from negative three to three of the absolute value of x dx, all right, so that's a pretty quick one we can sketch out. There's nothing fancy there. Absolute value makes a nice V, no shifts even going on. Now they're telling you, they want you to zoom in on the area from negative three to positive three. Okay, and I want all the area under the curve. So I want all this area and this area to the x-axis. Now, could we get creative and say, okay, basically I see how many triangles? Two, they're the exact same. Watch how you should rewrite this, and this is you know, how a multiple choice would be rewritten. I could really say I want two integral from where to where. Hopefully you're saying from zero to three of the absolute value of x dx. Okay, so basically instead of saying from going from here to here, I'm saying just give me one of these and multiply it by two. So let's go ahead and get that area. I'm gonna say it's two times the area of just this section here is one half base times height, one half. Uh, the base here is clearly three. And the height at three, again, if you don't know, plug three in the equation, is three. So I get nine halves times two, which is a total of nine. All right, let's throw some trig in the mix here. Um, the integral from negative pi to positive pi of cosine x dx. Now again, everybody gets sketched. All right, so I need pi over two pi, and I'm going to negative pi, negative pi over two. And of course we'll label those pi over two pi. And how high and how low does cosine go? Well, hopefully we're all familiar with one to negative one. And I know cosine starts at its max, so I'm gonna go zero, and they just fall in order. Here, here, 
here. And we'll have a nice smooth curve. Okay. Now, this one's actually really neat. I love this question. Remember, I want you to shade in from your curve to the x-axis. All right, so don't wait for me. Pause me, shade in where you think the area is from the curve to the x-axis. All right, typically everybody has this section and I think we'd agree with that. That's the curve to the x-axis. I actually had two more sections shaded in. Did you? Curve to the x-axis. Curve to the x-axis. All right, it certainly can fall under the curve. That's fine. It's just curve to the x-axis. That's what's got to be going through your head. All right, now what's special about this curve? Since it's symmetric, what do you know if I put an x here and an x here? What do you know about those areas? Well, I know they're the exact same size. And here's what we're saying. If our area is above the x-axis, it's going to count for positive. And if it's below, we're going to say it's negative. Okay, so... Essentially, what are these two sections doing to each other? They're just canceling each other out. It's the same area above and the same area below. So they cancel each other out. Likewise, I have this area above, we'll star it, and this area below. They're the same size, and above would be positive, below would be negative. Since they're the same, they're just canceling each other out. So I would say this has an area of zero. Example six. The integral from 0 to 8 of x over 4 dx. Okay, now again, it might, don't let it look intimidating. It's very simple. Who is your function? Okay, by now, if we've taken a derivative and integrated, we should know that's 1 fourth x. All right, so I'm going to sketch that function. Y intercept is 0. It's rising. Its rate is pretty small, so keep that in mind when you draw it. Rises 1 and runs 4. Okay, so it's a nice small section there. And it wants the area from 0 to 8. Okay, so let's say that's 8. And it's curved to the x-axis. Curved to the x-axis. All right, again, it's simple. It's a nice, easy triangle. So I'm saying area equals 1 half base times height. I've got 1 half. Clearly, my base is 8. My height, nobody gets stuck on this. If you don't know off the top of your head, you take 8 and you plug it back in. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I would say we have a nice area of 8. All right, couple more here. Um, number 7. Let's say the integral from 0 to 5 of the square root of 25 minus x squared dx. Okay. So again, don't get freaked out if you don't know the shape. Just say y equals the square root of 25 minus x squared. All right. Again, that's in disguise, but watch how I talk myself through it. I square both sides. So I said y squared equals 25 minus x squared. So I really get x squared plus y squared equals 25. So I've got a nice circle centered at the origin. Notice it was the positive radical, so it's just the part above. And it goes from plus or minus 5. Now be smart here. Okay, don't fall for this on the multiple choice. They only want the area from 0 to 5. We only are talking about that section of a circle. All right, so I'm saying that's 1 fourth pi r squared. So I've got 1 fourth pi radius of 5. So I'm going to say that's 25 pi over 4 for my area. All right, our next example, I want you to pause and get this sketched in your notebook pretty accurately. Um, I haven't gone too far, but make it big enough so you can obviously, you know, shade in and write some area there. So pause and let's get that sketched out perfectly. And here's our first question, A. Find the integral from negative 1 to 0 of f of x dx. All right, so again, all they're saying is what is the area under the curve to the x-axis from negative 1 to 0? So hopefully you're zooming in on that section, and I'll try to color it in blue a little, from negative 1 to 0. And again, all we're saying is what is the area, the integral is finding area under the curve. So pause it, come up with an area, and we'll see if they match. I had a nice area of 1. I saw a triangle, so 1 half base times height, and I got 1 as an answer. Hopefully you did as well. B, what is the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x dx? All right, so I'm going to use black this time. And again, you're just, you're stating the area under the x axis, or from the curve to the x-axis from 0 to 2. Again, I see a triangle, so once you pause it, come up with your area and see if it compares to mine. 
I got a nice area of two. Again, I just did one half base times height. Here's my triangle, my base would be two. My height, make sure your height is perpendicular. Your height has to be perpendicular to that x-axis. Um, I just noticed one thing I got super sloppy on. This function is actually g of x. Apologize for that, those should all be g's. Um, letter C, from negative two to zero of g of x dx. All right, so now I gotta grab something different here. I'm going from negative two, so this area, all the way to this area to zero. So I'm using these two blue parts of a bow tie, I guess. Now, remember, if you're under the x-axis, we're gonna count you as sort of negative area, and if you're above, you're positive area. Now, what's special about these two is that they are the exact same, one's just above and one's below. Notice I have one by two, one by two. So I'm gonna say that answer right away has an area of zero. They just cancel each other out. Letter D, oh, I did it again. Zero to three of g of x dx. Okay, so now again, I'm going in this section from zero to three, so it's this section and this section. Now remember, this has positive area because it's above the x-axis, and we're just gonna assign a negative value. I know we don't actually have negative area, but we're gonna assign a negative value because it's under the x-axis. All right, so do you notice anything that can cancel out? Now you could find the area of this shape and subtract this shape, or you could say, well, that's one by one, and this is one by one. Those two actually cancel each other out. Okay, so I really just need the area of this trapezoid here because these two sections cancel each other out. So I'm gonna go one half, my base height one plus height two. One half, that has a base of one. Okay, my height at zero is two, plus my height at one is one. So I'm gonna say that's a total of three halves or 1.5. Now again, you could have done it a little differently. You could have got the area of this triangle, which I believe we already know is two. And then you could have subtracted the area of this triangle, which is one by one times a half, which is a half, and you get one and a half, same thing. Uh, let's keep adding here. Let's say E. Let's say we integrate from zero to three of the absolute value of g of x. So we've talked about absolute value before. It just takes your whole function and makes it positive. It reflects it over the x-axis. So basically, I'm looking at this section zero to three, but I need to make all my values positive. So just picture taking this value and putting it above the x-axis. So let's see, I already know, I'm gonna break it up. I already know basically the area from zero to two, we did that here. So the area from zero to two is two, plus the area from two to three. And you're certainly allowed to break up those integrals. The area from two to three, we said was one half, negative one half. But because we want its absolute value, we're now gonna make it positive one half. So I get a nice 2.5 for my area, okay? Again, we had to take that absolute value and put it above the x-axis. So finally, a quick little recap of our, our mini lesson here. This is called a definite integral. All right, because it has bounds, this is our lower bound and our upper bound, and we always read that lower bound first. So this is the integral of a to b of f of x dx. And what that area, or what this integral is finding is the area from the curve to the x-axis. Okay, it's always curved to the x-axis. And lastly, if your function is sitting under the x-axis, we're gonna assign a negative value to it. Well, we look forward to a lot of practice tomorrow, and have a great night.